Hey everyone, got a fun one for you today. We are going to be building this animated tabs component using Frame or Motion. If you've never used layout animations or layout ID from Frame or Motion before, I think you're gonna like this one. And as always, if you're eager for the code from the final demo, go ahead and check the link in the description for the recipe over on Build UI. But uh, okay, let's get started. And we're starting off uh, with this super simple uh, component here that just sets some state to set the active tab like this. And what we wanna do is animate this blue pill. And we're gonna do it using Framer Motion. And to kind of motivate the solution here, uh, I'm gonna come down and show you exactly how easy it is to make layout animations work. So uh, right down here, let's just create a new div. We'll make it width five, height five, background red 500. And uh, let's just grab some margin top here and make this rounded full. Now, uh, if I were to make this flex, I could set this to justify start or justify end or justify center. And uh, we can see that dot moving around in the div. But uh, if we wanted to animate this dot, uh, how could we do it? Well, there's a few ways, but one of the easiest is to use frame or motion layout animations. And uh, it looks something like this. We're gonna come here, turn this div into a motion div. And then we're just gonna give it a layout ID prop of something constant. Let's say red dot, just like that. And now if I change center to start or end, look at that. Any change to our styling code or markup that causes the red dot to take on a new position or size in the DOM is automatically animated by frame or motion. And this is kind of the beauty and the magic of these layout animations. It's kind of like magic move in a keynote if you've ever had a piece of text animate from one slide to the next. But this works perfectly for this and it's exactly the strategy we're gonna use for our blue pill right up here. So all we need to do is make sure that this blue pill is its own div and then we can apply exactly the same treatment down here and it should be able to animate from one tab to the next. So let's do that. Let's actually come up to our buttons create a new div and we'll move the background blue 500 uh, right down here. We'll take it off of this. And to actually see this, let's make it absolute inset zero. And uh, it's taken up the full page, but if we go ahead and slap a relative on the button, uh, this absolute will be pinned to this button right here. We can see it takes the size of that button. And if we add rounded full, we'll see our pill is back. But uh, we're rendering a pill for each one of these nav links. We only want one for the active. So let's go ahead and grab this logic, the same one we were using for our classes, and only add the pill to the active link. And so now uh, we've got our blue pill kind of as a separate element. We can't read the text right now because we have positioned this absolutely. And that means it's taking on a new stack in context that's higher than the label. So let's just go ahead and wrap the label in a span relative. And that way uh, we can use the natural DOM order here for the text to be on top. So uh, we've got our blue pill here as a separate element. Let's come and apply exactly the same treatment uh, that we did to our red dot. We'll turn this into a motion div and we'll give it a layout ID. Let's call it active pill. And uh, look at that. All we had to do was give it a layout ID. I mean, the first time I saw this, I was pretty blown away. This pill is being removed and added elsewhere in the tree every time this re-renders, right? Because there's five buttons and only one of them gets our pill. And yet Framer Motion is able to animate it across uh, the entire area of our navigation bar. So this is pretty awesome, pretty powerful stuff. Uh, but if you look closely, or if we were to slow down the duration to maybe five seconds, uh, we're going to see that we're not quite there yet in terms of polishing this up. So uh, let's come here, zoom back in. We'll get rid of our red dot. And let's have a closer look. The first thing we'll notice um, is that if I go left, the text is always behind the pill. But surprisingly, if I go to the right here, uh, the pill 
is rendered on top of the text. And this just has to do with where the tab is being rendered in the DOM. If it's later than an earlier button, it's gonna render on top, but really we always want this text to be rendered on top. So we can just add a Z10 and uh, this should fix this problem so that regardless of the ordering of the pill and the sibling buttons, the text is always on top and uh, it looks like that is fixed just fine. So now we always have the text behind the blue button regardless of which way we go and that looks a lot better. The next thing here is uh, if I slow this down, you might notice, especially if I go from a larger word like business to a smaller one like New York, uh, we are actually seeing some distortion in the border radius. And uh, right there, you can see it again. And right there, it just is kind of flipping around. And this has to do with how these layout animations actually work. And the way they work is with this transform property and the position is controlled by scale. So if I were to come here and say scale X is one, and then I start increasing it, look what happens to the border radius. Uh, it's getting distorted, right? And uh, the way you can think how these transforms work is basically by taking a picture of our element and then just transforming it with scale and with position. And that keeps these animations really fast, but we can see it causes distortion in certain properties like border radius and box shadow. Well, fortunately, there is a super easy way to fix this. Let's go ahead and refresh. Right now, our pill has a tailwind class, which is just applying a border radius of 9999 pixels to get this kind of full rounded shape. But Framer Motion doesn't know that. It can't really read our CSS. But if we use the style prop instead and set the border radius right here as a number and delete our tailwind class. Now check this out. No problem. We can go from New York to business and now there's actually a scale correction going on and there's no distortion happening with the border radius. And uh, it's kind of cool. You can see this very easily um, if we find this element right here, it's being updated by frame or motion. So we don't even have to think about it. And so now if we go back to our default transition, everything's looking great. Let's add a little bit of transition to the colors on hover since now we're animating the pill. And uh, this is starting to look really nice. So uh, I'm pretty happy with what we have here, but there's one more trick I wanna show you that is really useful when building a component like this. And uh, we haven't needed it yet because we're actually kind of playing on easy mode right now. Let me show you what I mean. If you'll notice, uh, the background color we've chosen for this pill uh, works with white text, just like the background color of our app does. Um, but if I were to come here and make this a little bit lighter, let's say blue 400, blue 300, blue 200, maybe down to 100. Uh, eventually you're gonna have a situation where uh, the design calls for an inversion of the text color on the pill itself, right? This is too low contrast to keep the text white. So we actually want to invert the text color uh, over this. So maybe you would say, well, let's come here. And if we're active, let's throw back in the class name of text gray 900, something like that. And uh, this should work just fine. In fact, we could even bring this all the way to background white, something like that. And now we kind of have this neutral theme and uh, we should be good to go, right? Well, uh, look what we've done here. Let's go ahead and slow this down again. If I click on science, <laughs> we're gonna see the text just sort of disappears. And uh, this is because this inactive text is white, right? And so we can't see it over the pill. And so ideally, uh, what would we wanna do here? Well, let's slow this down to 50 and uh, just take a look. What if we could have it so that the text only inverted when it was covering the pill and when it was on the background, it was white just like normal. So uh, wouldn't that be cool if there was a way to kind of blend two colors in CSS only when they overlap? Well, it turns out there is and uh, it's easier than you might think. Let's come back and remove this active treatment so that all the text is white. And let's come to our label right here and look for mix blend. Now, these are a set of Tailwind utilities that control the mix blend mode CSS property. And uh, one of them is called exclusion. If I were to add this class and save, 
Check this out. Our white text is black when it's on top of the white pill. And if I click over here, as the text doesn't overlap business anymore, uh, we see it goes back to white. And so this is effectively creating a mask and mixed blend mode exclusion is a certain transformation that calculates the new color based on uh, the, the color of the text on top and the color of the pill below. If you've used Figma or another digital editing tool, you probably are familiar with all these mixed blend modes. You know, there's multiply, screen overlay, darken, lighten. All of them are effectively a way of creating a new color from compositing two separate colors that are on top of each other. And uh, they all use kind of a different transformation to maybe brighten the RGB channels or darken them or average them. And in this case, exclusion uh, works perfectly here to kind of achieve the effect we want. So now if we go back to full speed, let's actually give a little bit of character here and add a type of spring, maybe with a duration of 0.6. We are gonna have a really nice looking set of animated tabs with a little bit of bounce here from the spring, but importantly, the text is inverting only when the pill passes over. And we've got the border radius correction and the layout animation thanks to frame or motion. And uh, all of this is working in spite of this div being unmounted and remounted within our JSX tree. So uh, that about wraps it up for this one. I was pretty impressed with how easy Frame or Motion made this. Uh, again, if you want to reference the code, I made a recipe for it over on buildjoy.com. So check a link in the description for that. Otherwise, ask me questions in the comments if you have any, and I will see you in the next one.